What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for yet another Tottenham update and quite a lot to get through today in terms of injury news. Um, but what we're going to start off with, we're going to start off talking about Pierre-Emil Hoybier, but like I said before, welcome to a Tottenham update. And I'm here with Brian Daigle, which I failed to mention when I first started this. So, Brian, how are we doing today? We're doing good, mate. We are doing very, very good. You mentioned Pierre Emil Hoybier, and uh, I think, thankfully, one thing we can definitely say is you're not going to say he's injured. Yeah, no, he's definitely not injured. But <laughs> yeah, there exactly. are quite, Robo quite a few players that we're going to have to talk about that are injured. Um, if you're new around here, go and subscribe to We Are Tottenham. Go and subscribe to Tottenham on Tour, and also check out our website, wattv.co.uk, for your latest Tottenham articles. But let's get into the Tottenham update. Talking about Pierre Mahoyebier, Gazzetta Italia say that Juventus are interested in Pierre Mahoyebier. A club representative even watched the player in action for his country against Kazakhstan. Stan uh, this week and Tottenham value the player at 30 million euros. I mean, Brian, we've spoken about kind of Pierre looking for options um, in January, potentially this summer. Um, does interest from Juventus surprise you at all? Not at all. Not at all. And if you look at it, um, he's a good player. We've been speaking about how much respect he deserves and how good a job he's doing. People will know his situation, that he's not first team. He's going to become attractive to the team, isn't he? He's going to become yeah. attractive and think, right, we can get him. He's not being he's surplus to requirements or, or not being used as much. And uh, I think Italian football would suit him very, very well. Um, and a team like Juventus is, a, let's face it, it's a massive, massive football club. Uh, this doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Yeah, me as well, to be honest. And I think um, it's only a testament of his professionalism and uh, how well he's been doing for Spurs, always available, um, His how, how well he's been doing for his country as well. Um, and interest from Juventus is only testament to that, isn't it? 100%, Ben, 100%. Like we said, we, we've spoken about how much of a modern professional he's been. We know what he puts on the t what he puts on the, on the field. We know what he gives off the field. Um, he's shown again... Like we just said, it hardly ever injured. What's there not to like for a, a, a buying team, a player that's a modern professional, does his job and hardly ever gets injured? What's your gut telling you, Brian? Do you think he's going to go in January? I hope not. I hope not. I, I want, if there is to be a departure, I want it to be in the summer. Mm. If there is to be one, we spoke about this earlier on in the week, didn't we, Ben? I was like, if, if there was to be a departure, first of all, we need replacements in for Basuma and Saar for AFCONs already. We need a replacement for him and he should be allowed to go, like you said, Ben, rightly, rightly so, at the end of the window when those two mentioned on the way back so we're not, uh, we're not weakened. Yeah, no, totally agree. Uh, my opinion as of a couple of days ago still stands today, funnily enough. Uh, but let's move on to the next topic. We're going to talk about Mickey van der Ven and build out in Germany a report that Tottenham could end up paying an extra 10 million euros for Mickey van der Ven this season if they qualify for the Champions League. And the 10 million is, is fairly steep for uh, like an add-on for Champions League. But do you think, um, I mean, well worth the money anyway, isn't he? Exactly. I mean, I, I don't, these kind of things, again, I understand. We, we, we might have to pay 10 million because the player did a really good job. <laughs> surely, that's, surely that's what you want. You want to bring a player and his add ons are like, if you get Champions League football, I've got to pay you more money because we succeeded. Pay it. If it was 15 million, 20 million, it's we not, have got... It's not a question of, uh, of us questioning whether we should pay it or not. It's, it's a clause in the contract. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, Spurs agreed to it. 10 million, if you, if you look at it, if we get Champions League, 10 million is a snip. Mm. Is a snip and uh, would be worth every single penny. Yeah. Totally agree. And I, I mean, it's just interesting to see like uh, the inner goings on of the deals that we kind of make and maybe they were speaking about what, what, what was the fee that we spoke about originally? Was it 35 million, 40 million uh, plus bonuses right, or something man. like that, or including bonuses? So I guess this is the figure that's going to take it closer to the 50 million pound mark. And even like 50 million pound for a player like Mickey van der Ven, from what we've seen at him at such an early stage, I, I, I think it's a good price. Well, well, you look at it the other way around, Ben. Uh, we bought Richarlison for 50. And mm. based on certain uh, things being reached, we got to give Everton another 10. So that goes up to 60. Um, that's obviously not worked out. We know we can tell Van der Ven is going to work out. So 
having to pay if that's what it took as well to get the deal over the line when it took that time to an extra 10 million on add-ons so be it we have got a player that's going to be there please god for a majority of his career and part of the cornerstone or, or the backbone sorry of our defense for many many years to come so uh extra 10 million i'd rather we pay van der ven an extra 10 million than not have had him yeah 100 percent. no i totally agree um but let's talk about all these injury problems that we have at the moment we're going to start off talking about hyung min son the standard are saying that hyung min son confirmed he played through the pain for south korea as he didn't want to disappoint the fans back home he was limping at half time went on to score in the second half uh, before seeing out the full 90 minutes of the 6-0 win over vietnam the 31 year old confirmed afterwards that a groin injury meant he had struggled to train ahead of the game but he was determined to play no matter to what um i don't even know what to make out of this you're talking about a friendly against vietnam that he ended up playing 90 minutes and he struggled to train uh coming into it i mean that that's that's got to be a kick in the teeth to all spurs fans uh thinking about it. i know um he's very pat patriotic i know he loves his country but surely you've got to think a bit smarter than that when it's only i i can i could understand it if it was a, like a pivotal world cup qualifier mm -hmm. or an asia cup qualifier or something like that but to put yourself through that for a, a friendly like fine play yep. half and play half the game at least don't play for the whole 90 minutes you know and you could see like he was in visible pain throughout the whole game we saw it in the first half we saw it when he was coming out um, off for half time we saw him in the second half as well go down injured a couple of times holding his groin so it's just not a very smart move from him is it no i mean uh, we spoke yesterday i, I had a, a lot of people from the far east that i spoke to say we don't want him playing against Vietnam. Vietnam, listen, if it's a groin injury, it didn't matter who he's playing against, but because obviously it's a muscle you're using, it's going to pull or whatever. But uh, they were saying this is the game we'd rather he didn't play out of the two. And I saw, I heard as well, I can't remember where it was, I think it was on Twitter or wherever, where people were saying, why are we not stopping him? And, the pack, and people were saying, do you know what? He might have deals with his sponsors and endorsements like Samson and other uh, endorsements he has out there to make an appearance out there. It might be contractual obligated. But when you th sit, when you three play one half, Jurgen Klinsmann has the has the obviously the right to take him off whenever he wants. Forget Jurgen Klinsmann's the next first player. You're you're in a friendly. You're whatever you are up at half time. He's had his appearance. Off you go. You got to remember Jurgen Klinsmann surely has got to be thinking about the Asia Games as well. The son he's going away for in January. If he's got this nickel now and he comes back to Tottenham and plays and does even more damage. He could be out of the uh, uh, the Asian Cup, yeah. and then they have a huge, huge blow. So uh, I don't. I, I understand everyone being patriotic for their country. That part you could understand, but you got to think about your health. Listen, I, I absolutely love Sonny, but it's too many times that he does this. Where um, you know, last season played through the pain the whole season when he needed yep. a hernia operation when he. Um, put the team before his own health and his own needs um when we had Richarlison waiting in the wings um now this is it's happening again you know he's got this groin injury he's not really training for Tottenham as as maybe as well as or as much as the other players he's playing at the weekends playing really well and um he goes over to international travels all the way out to South Korea at hardly trains and then plays 90 minutes in a friendly I mean at least for Spurs we're kind of taking him up on the hour mark or just after um and he's not playing the 90 minutes but I I Sonny needs to be treating himself better than he is and I commend him for kind of putting himself out there and and really putting others before himself but it's going to do him damage uh, one day. It really is. And he needs to be looking after himself a lot better than he is. Uh, the one thing I'll add to this as well, Ben, is thankfully we're playing on the Monday. This is the one saving grace. If we're playing on a Saturday or a Sunday, what you'd imagine he's flying back from Korea today. You'd imagine they played, or yeah, just uh, or he flew back after the game. So he might even be back in London. He's got till Monday to recover and have all the physio he can. It's not going to be 100% and he's going to be uh, ship shape and ready to go. Uh, but at least he's got those two extra days to recover, uh, get over whatever jet lag he may have um, and be a, a lot more sharper for, for Monday. But yeah, this, it's got to stop. And it's not just with Sonny, isn't it? We've we had this, we're, I'm sure we're going to come on to a certain Argentinian shortly. Um, he's got... We, we, Spurs, you know what? 
I've heard it a lot. A lot of we, Spurs as a club have got to start being a lot more vocal. When you see these other big clubs that are challenging for titles or Champions League, if their TV scheduling is like they're a Sunday night and they're way up north or, or down south, whatever, they come out and say, Look, our fans have got to try, this ain't fair, we're doing this, then we're playing this, then we're playing that. Spurs, nothing. International injuries, other clubs come out. Look what Arsenal did with Saka uh, uh, and other things. They come out, bang. What do Spurs do? Radio silence. So as much as the players are, are uh, having to take better responsibility, this club need to sometimes just say and stand firm and represent the club and say, do you know what? This ain't happening. We're not happy with this. Um, or like Fergie said, you could have him, but you're only playing this amount of time. Mm. But hopefully the club will do it. But uh, again, it, it's, it's not on. And I think Spurs are actually in their right to do that when it's only a friendly. I mean, if it's a competitive game and a, and a qualifier or something like that, I don't think Spurs probably have a leg to stand on. But when it's only a friendly, surely uh, they've they've got to be having words with uh, the Korean FA or or whoever the decision makers are, um, or even Sonny himself, because it looks as though, for, by all accounts, that it was Sonny that was uh, saying, you know, I want to do it. I don't want to let the fans yep. down. Um, so... I think they've got to be having words with him because he needs to be looking after himself better, like I said. So let's just hope it's not as bad as as maybe um, it could be and he comes back and he plays on the weekend, but he needs to be getting himself back to 100% fitness because we can't... How, how long can we go on like this uh, where he's not training, he's only playing 60, 70 minutes in games? Like surely um, it's, injuries are going to take their toll and he's going to be out for, a, for an amount of time. Well, well, to add to this as well, first of all, what I was saying about the club standing up, that before people start going, that was a shot of Daniel Levy. It isn't a shot of Daniel Levy at all. It's about the playing side and the coaching staff and the medical team should be standing up and saying, listen, he's not good, not the board, the 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 the, the medical team. Um, and then when you look at it with Sunny Bed, what you've got to look at is it may be a, a, been OK if we had a recognised striker that was on form that could play and say, right, Sonny, we'll take the heat off you for a bit, recover, We'll put him in. Our, 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 let's face it, our, our, our deputy right now is Valise. Richard yeah. has been deployed on the left. Um, and then you're chucking an 18 or 19 year old, however old he is, um, into the starting lineup as a focal point. We need, yeah, it, it, it's, it's not fair for Sonny, it's not fair for the club, especially how well we're doing. We're doing extremely well. And as we as we go through this update talking about the players that are injured, it just goes to show we always said we're a couple of injuries away from a nightmare and uh, it could be around the corner. Well, let's move on from Hume Son and let's talk about Rodrigo Bentancor. As the standard report that Bentancor continues to edge towards a return to action, the Uruguay midfielder is the one of five senior players out of action as the end of the international break draws closer. So there's no setbacks on Bentancor. It looks as though he is edging towards action, but how long it takes him to get back to his best, um, who knows? Because once you get an ACL, it's a very serious injury, and I think it's it's going to take time for him to get back to his best, and hopefully. I'm looking at that period in January where the AFCON comes around for him to really um, stake a claim for his first team spot again. Yeah, I mean, I see what you're doing here, Ben. A bit of a, as we say, a bullshit sandwich. We'll have some bad news, we'll put in some good news, and then we'll go to another injury. So we'll have the bullshit sandwich. <laughs> Listen, any news about uh, Benton Core getting fitter is always going to be a, a massive positive. Um, just to have him back training with the first team squad is massive. To see him finally be back on the bench is massive and then obviously when is when, when he's at 100 percent fitness and hopefully back to his best we have got an incredible midfielder on our hand it's been a, a long time coming yeah and just to keep hearing good positive things about benson core getting better can only uh be a blessing and he may he let's just hope he's not called on too soon yeah I agree. Um, next up, let's talk about Brennan Johnson. As the standard are reporting that Brennan Johnson has been carrying an issue of late ahead of Monday's game against Fulham. We heard uh, before the international break that Brennan Johnson should be back for the Fulham game, but it seems as though that might be in doubt now. Spurs medical team, ladies and gentlemen. Spurs medical team. Um, I hear you and Ben obviously talk about, uh, you and Simeon, sorry, talk about this a lot when... We hear the dreaded, oh, he's only a week away. 
That's like the kiss of death, isn't it? I, I hear you. How many times have we spoken time. about that over the years, man? Exactly. It, it's happened and it looks like it's happening again. Because um, from what I remember, when we were at the Arsenal game, Ben, he got taken off as a precaution. They said it was more of a strain than a rip or a tear, whatever the 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 ana- uh, analysis they gave they him. They said it was and muscle it fatigue. That's what they said. They said there you go, it, was, it was first feared as a hamstring injury. And then when well, after assessments that it's just muscle fatigue and he should be back in a week's time. And uh, how long ago was... Uh, so it was... Uh, about so, three so, weeks about, ago about, now. Yeah, and a one-week injury, and he's now got another injury set back. Um, it's a concern. He's only, just, he's only just joined us. Yeah. And it's like, welcome to the Spurs medical team and uh, how things happen. Let's just hope this time when they say he might not be fit for, for this game... To be, to be honest, I'd rather he be fit for Palace than Fulham because away games on the counter or whatever. Um, so let's hope if it is a setback, it is only a minor one. Yeah, let's hope so. Let's move on and talk about Cuti Romero. As reports in Argentina say that Romero was subbed right after half time in Argentina's qualify against Peru, seemingly going through some discomfort. However, Charlie Eccleshare has says that the early indications are not the ankle issues that forced Romero off in Argentina's game against Peru last night. It's not so serious. So let's hope uh, that that's all true and it's not so serious and he will be playing against um, Fulham this weekend or Monday. Yeah, I mean, this one's integral, isn't it? This this man we, 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 we cannot do without... Um, don't want to break that partnership with him and Van der Ven and the form he's been in and the form he's been on. Um, we, we we cannot afford it. This is another player that when he goes away, every time he goes away to Argentina, he seems to pick up a knock. Now, maybe it's because of the amount of games we play in quick succession, even though we're playing one game a week at the moment, um, and then the long travel to, to Argentina or wherever they're playing. Um, thankfully, it looks like he... See, this is the thing. He came off as a precaution. Argentina did the right thing. Yes, we can mm. all say he shouldn't have gone, he shouldn't have played that amount of minutes, but he picked up some kind of knock and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not Why shouldn't he have gone, gone, though? Why shouldn't he have gone? Say again? Why shouldn't if he have gone? I'm not saying he should have. I, I'm saying oh. when he's gone before. I'm right. saying what they did, Argentina did the right thing as soon as they had a precaution. Like, off you come, i.e. Sonny, you're playing with an injury, you started with an injury, you're in pain, you're staying on for the whole 90 minutes. Well done, Argentina, for doing the right thing and taking him off. And uh, let's just hope <coughs> that it, it, we see the lineup on Monday and he's in the centre of defence. Yeah. If he isn't, um, if he isn't fit for this game, how would you like to see our back two lineup? I, I, I don't know. I, I think when you look at it, I, my, my preferred choice would be since right centre back, either Emerson. Go straight in there, or or it. Do you move Van der Ven into the centre and play Ben Davies in the left? Do you give Ashley Phillips a go? And I'm a huge fan of Phillips. What do you do, Ben? This is a very difficult situation. This is the injury I've kind of been dreading uh, since the start of the season, to be honest, because yep. I don't think we've got any adequate replacements for Romero at all. Um, I would. I would like to say Phillips, to be honest. I'd like to say Phillips. It's all about what Ange thinks of him in training. I think he yep. does think the world of him. But is he ready at 18 years of age to come into a Premier League game? That's that's that, the, that's, that, the, that's the only question mark. It I is. Like it is. I, know he, I know he kept in England under-19s uh, yeah. recently. Obviously, he's very highly thought of in England. Um, if he was to be thrown in, listen, we're, we're, we've done this before. Ledley King made his home debut, an official debut against Liverpool. Jaffet Tanganga did it in the central defence. And we all thought, you know what? Who is this guy? What's he going to do against the mighty Liverpool then compared to the team Ledley King played? So why can't Ashley Phillips do it? I Like I said, I'm a huge fan of Ashley Phillips. I think he's going to be a, a terrific defender for us for many years to come. Um, but I think if it, it put it this way, if it had been Van der Ven out injured, I would say Romero and Phillips. I just think with it maybe being Romero and Emerson can play there, I think his experience against Fulham may be just over, uh, over, overdo it. Mm. All right. And let's move on to the last story of the update. 
and it's regarding Eve Bissouma. Um, reports in Mali claim that Bissouma was injured during the Eagles' first training session. Bissouma suffered from inflammation of uh, muscle in his quadriceps. It, it's not been known how long he's out for, if the injury is serious or not. But what we do know is that he got injured in, in Mali's first training session and he was not even on the bench for the Mali uh, game a couple of days ago or, or yesterday it might have been. And I was thinking it was strange because there was no news of him pulling out of training, no news of him getting an injury. And I see Mali were playing, um, I can't even remember who they were playing, but they were playing Saudi Arabia. That was it. They played Saudi Arabia in Portugal. So thinking, all right, a nice short trip for Suba. I go and yep. look at the lineups. He's not on the starting lineup. He's not on the bench. There's no news of anything why he's not there. And then I'm seeing the reports come through today saying he got injured in, in a training session for Mali. So I know he's not going to be playing this weekend anyway because he's suspended. But if he is injured for any like good amount of time, that is going to be so detrimental to us. Yeah, if he's out for a considerable amount of time, it's a, it's a big concern. We all know Pierre or Hoybier will come in for, for him or we would expect against Fulham. Um, I also wouldn't mind against Crystal Palace, give him as much rest as Basuma is ready and available for Chelsea. No concern about picking up a yellow card if he doesn't play the next two games. Um, him being out, uh, you you say Romero. I think Romero and uh, Basuma for me are the two biggest people that I wouldn't have wanted to see injured. It's like we've heard Romero, one. Basuma and Son, those three. <laughs> Yeah, it's looking at. I mean, some we don't know if he'll play, but if it, if it's Romero out and Basuma out, you're looking at the defender that Anne said after Luton is controlling the whole back five, and that's why we're doing so well. And we all know what Basuma brings to the football club, and no one at the club, let alone in the league, does what he does. Um, he will be a huge miss, a huge miss. Uh, as good as Pierre can come in and do a job, he can. He can't do what Basuma does. Um, mm. So it'd be a huge worry for me. Yeah. Well, there you have it. That is your Tottenham update for today. Go and check out wattv.co.uk for all your latest Tottenham articles. Brian, thank you for coming on. Sorry, it's not the most positive update today, but um, this is what we've been fearing. We've been fearing um, injuries in key areas yeah. um, in terms of how well Spurs can do this season. And if any of these injuries are as serious as maybe first feared or even more serious than than what they're looking at right now, then Spurs could be in real trouble. But let's hope that... Um, that they come back to Spurs tomorrow or today and we find out that they're completely fine for the games this weekend and next weekend. So that is your Tottenham update for today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on you Spurs. Come on you Spurs.